All right, everybody, let's try this one. The most abundant enzyme in the biosphere is, you see, abundant means something in a very large quantity. Okay, so let's see which is in a very, very large quantity in the entire biosphere, not just a body. A, collagen, B, rubisco, C, trypsin or D, insulin. Let's start with insulin. You see, insulin is not an enzyme, it's a hormone. And in fact, insulin plays a very important role in maintaining the blood glucose level. So it's not the correct answer because it's not an enzyme. C. Trypsin. Trypsin is an enzyme, but it's not the most abundant one in the biosphere. Trypsin plays a very important role in digestion. Okay, so since it's not the abundant one, that's the incorrect answer. Let's go to collagen. Option A. Collagen. Collagen, students, is the most abundant protein. Not an enzyme, not an hormone. It's the most abundant protein in the body and it's found in the skin, the ligaments, the tendons. Also seen that it adds strength to, to those structures. Now what is left? Option B, Rubisco. And that happens to be the correct answer for this question. Let's see what's Rubisco. You see students, Rubisco stands for ribulose, bisphosphate, carboxylase, oxygenase. It's found in plants and the primary function is carbon fixation. What happens is when you talk about photosynthesis, the process where the plant is making its own food, you remember it needs carbon dioxide, right? So this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is fixed into the plants by Rubisco. All right. And if you observe the structure, it's highly complex. So the complex, the structure, complex, the function. Now, when you see the details of it, please note Rubisco 1,5 bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase is the most abundant enzyme in the biosphere and plays an important role in the Calvin cycle in plant during photosynthesis. A very important cycle which basically will give you the products leading to photosynthesis. Alright, please keep this in mind. Also note, Rubisco has a dual nature, carboxylase and oxygenase. So, it is fixing carbon dioxide but at the same time it also has a tendency to fix oxygen if carbon dioxide is very very limited. Alright everyone, now let's try this. An organic substance bound to an enzyme and essential for its activity is called A. Holoenzyme, B. Apoenzyme, C. Isoenzyme or D. Coenzyme. Take a look at this image. When you take a look at this particular structure, you're looking at two parts making one, isn't it? So, a protein portion which we call as apoenzyme, a non-protein part or portion which we call as cofactor. Together, you get a whole enzyme, holoenzyme. Now, let's see further. Let, let's put them in a beautiful flowchart so you can have a good visual uh, memory of it. See, we have established, yes, the holoenzyme has got apoenzyme and a cofactor. The cofactor, on the other hand, can either be inorganic like metal ions or organic like coenzymes. Alright, so which is the organic part? Coenzymes. Let's mark that. Which option was it? Option B. That's the correct answer here. Right. Now let's put these in words. Okay, if you want, take a look. Two parts making a whole enzyme and this beautiful flowchart to simplify your understanding. And now let's put them in words. So we know holoenzyme has two parts, apoenzyme which is the protein part and the non-protein part which we call as cofactor. Now a coenzyme is the organic cofactor that binds to the apoenzyme and is essential for the, for the action of an enzyme. Enzymes whose amino acid sequence or structures varies but they catalyze the same reaction are called as isoenzymes, alright. So what they are made up of may be a little different, but what they are doing is similar. Here's another question, children. The repeating unit of glycogen is A, fructose, B, mannose, C, glucose or D, galactose. Okay. Now, the repeating unit of glycogen. Now, what is glycogen? It is the stored food found in the animal tissues, right? Glycogen. So, uh, if glycogen is a stored food, so what is coming together and making this glycogen? What is it? Is it A, fructose? Uh, is it B, mannose? C, glucose? Or D, galactose? Now, let's just directly look at the structure of glycogen. Here we go, children. Take a look at this. Now, if you take a look at this particular structure of glycogen, see these units, each unit that you observe in a glycogen is nothing but glucose. Okay, so all the excess of glucose in the body is chained together 
and and then is then converted into glycogen and stored in the liver okay now let's take a look at the other options what about the other one so we already know now the answer is glucose what is the repeating unit of glycogen glucose let's not complicate it simple now fructose mannose galactose what are these these are also sugars right fructose you will generally find them in the fruits and mannose you will find them some uh, apples and peaches some fruits have small quantities of mannose in fact even the human plasma will have a little bit of mannose then galactose it's one of the sugars which combines with glucose and gives you the milk sugar lactose so these are all uh, uh, types of sugars okay you can keep them in mind but it's a simple question don't complicate it repeating unit of glycogen glucose okay so let's just sum this up glycogen is a polymer of glucose the repeating unit of glucose forms glycogen and glucose is stored in the body in the form of glycogen the formation of glycogen by polymerization meaning making long chains of glucose this process where the glucose 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 are linked together to make it a glycogen this process is glycogenesis genesis glycogenesis okay uh, do you have to remember the entire process name and all for this one no all that you are expected to remember is what is glycogen and uh, how what is it made up of that's about it okay this is a very important question children all of the following statements include functions of proteins except so all of the following are functions of protein but which is not a digestion of food substances come on think about it digestion of food substances is brought about by whom enzymes right what are enzymes made up of proteins we'll discuss which are those enzymes next action against disease causing microbes well your protein will play an important role because if you remember vaguely maybe you must have come across a word called as antigen antibody and all that right now especially with all the corona thing going on you must have heard antigen 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 right okay we'll discuss all this transport of oxygen now who's transporting oxygen in the body children hemoglobin inside the rbcs yes or no the red blood cell they have hemoglobin and hem and globin these are the two compounds which make a hemoglobin and there is protein involved here as well and finally carrying genetic information now carrying genetic information what is the genetic material that you remember dna and rna right dna rna these are the two basic genetic material isn't it now these genetic material what are they made up of are they made up of proteins no they are made up of nucleic acids all right these nucleic acids are the ones which will do the job of carrying the genetic information so there's no protein involved here are you getting it so what's the answer which is not the function of protein in these four carrying the genetic information okay so this is the answer but let's just get a discussion of this question and also what i'll be doing is i'll be sharing the functions of protein so that if in case you don't have it written down anywhere or you are too confused to get it down write it down right now paste it somewhere in your book and nicely and read it well every day you will have the answer by heart because you may get that as a good question so here is the discussion children let's take a look at this so proteins now look first point was about digestion so digestive enzymes which are the digestive enzymes trypsin pepsin amylase pancreatic amylase salivary amylase so these are digestive enzymes and they are made up of proteins so technically protein has a function of digestion easy then antibodies antibodies the ones which are found in the blood stream that will make sure that whatever pathogen or the disease causing microorganism enters the body it is taken care of by the body's antibodies okay so they are also having a proteinaceous structure now you will study about that a little more in your higher classes hemoglobin transport of oxygen yes hemoglobin has protein so it does play a role in transport of oxygen and what it does not have genetic information is carried by nucleic acids okay and these nucleic acids basically are seen in what we have studied as dna and rna not the proteins okay so you can take a look at these diagrams to sum it up see this hemoglobin is present in the blood cells your antibodies they actually do look like that y shaped okay trying to trap out the microbe you will study the structure also in the next academic year then pepsin it's a digestive enzyme yes 
in the stomach yeah now let's take a look at the genetic material how what exactly are we talking about we're talking about nucleic acids see these nucleic acids will give you dna and rna all right something that you did study nucleic acids correct now let's take a look at the functions and write them down like i told you in case you don't have it you can write these down i'll read it out too proteins perform a plethora of functions lot of functions you don't have to write this word in your answer it's not required uh, what are the functions though you, wrote, you write this down a enzymes so they catalyze catalyzation i hope you remember it is just the increasing like the in this case enzymes generally do the role of speeding up the process of a reaction chemical reaction in the body all enzymes are proteinaceous there are selective enzymes which might not be proteinaceous but majority of them are proteinaceous made up of protein defense proteins called antibodies act against disease causing microbes yeah you have a lot of detail in, in the coming academic years next transport protein like hemoglobin is involved in the gaseous transport oxygen carbon dioxide then albumin helps in the transport of ions that is also a protein and then what else apart from ions does albumin help it helps in the transport of drugs i mean medicines and then calcium or more and more okay finally oh there are two more digestive enzymes like trypsin pepsin amylase etc cause digestion in food which we already saw and receptor proteins occur in all the cell membrane receptor proteins they are found on the cell membrane the plasma membrane so it literally is like receiving someone so they are receptor proteins they are capable of binding with specific molecules and triggering the cellular effects so it's like uh, there are very special things or very selective things that the cell wants so for that there are specific proteins sitting on the plasma membrane they will accept it from the uh, extracellular spaces and bring it inside the cell so that's what they will do receptor proteins okay some of them help in other vital functions such as contraction movement of the muscles cell division and progression of the cell cycle so there are may various function as you see then providing structural support to the organism or the cell etc etc so abundant functions of proteins lots of function of proteins all right now however carrying genetic information is not the function of proteins uh, uh, if you start when you start studying in the higher classes you will see that for a long time people thought it was but then it was later found no it's not going to have any role in genetic information all right and there's a reason also because if you remember proteins if they break down at higher temperatures and but genetic material has to be very very stable it uh, hypothetically if it breaks down so quickly and you stand under the sun and the breakdown starts to or if it is too hot and the breakdown starts to happen you do not want to have mutations happening all the time do you right so here we go the genetic information is carried by dna and rna not by proteins easy please keep that in mind hope you have written the functions and uh, read that it can become for a subjective uh, school paper as well okay this is a good question now the cofactor for the enzyme carboxypeptidase is so children this is like a direct question memory based question what you will have to do is just by heart this and remember it the cofactor okay so i'll re i'll just reiterate what is a cofactor the cofactor for the enzyme carboxypeptidase is a copper b iron c zinc or d manganese so we'll just give you a direct answer since it's a memory based question so answer is zinc children the answer is zinc okay now let's take a look at this table you can note it down if you see this chart table here it's a it's a simplified version in case you're wondering which enzyme has which metal ion you have this can you take a look at the list of cofactors so copper is found in cytochrome oxidase iron ribonucleotide reductase zinc in carboxypeptidase and manganese in pyruvate carboxylase so these are the enzymes which have these particular uh, cofactors attached to them okay so here you can simply remember the names for now if you want to you can make a note of it as well uh, is it important absolutely yes it's important you need to know that now let's discuss more so what is your answer here we can directly go in zinc correct 
Now let's just discuss about what is a cofactor and let's give you a small introduction about what is, how is a coenzyme different from uh, the others in a cofactor, okay? So let's start. An enzyme consists of two parts, a protein and a non-protein. The protein part is apoenzyme and the non-protein part is cofactor, correct? So apoenzyme and cofactor fit like a jigsaw puzzle and then what you get is holoenzyme, they are entire enzyme, okay? So let's take a look at this now. The apoenzyme and the cofactor together forms the whole enzyme, holoenzyme. There are three kinds of cofactors prosthetic group, coenzyme and metal ions. Further, coenzymes that are transient organic groups, organic, transient, which means they're not going to, they're temporary, so they can move on, all right? So the coenzymes are transient organic groups which are not attached to the apoenzyme permanently like the prosthetic groups, okay? So these are coenzymes. So coenzymes are transient groups, they're not permanently attached, easy? Example is NADP, all right, NADP, what is it? Nicotinamide dinucleotide phosphate. Now next, metal ions, they are the inorganic cofactors which form coordination bonds with the side chains, okay? So they are more like, you know, uh, link and dance together. So that's what the metal ions will do. They'll just like link, 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 clear? Example, zinc in carboxypeptidase, which your question was asking about. Easy? Keep this in mind. And if in case you missed out on this definition of pro, what is prosthetic group and what is a cofactor, coenzyme, hopefully that is cleared here. Okay, write that down. Very important it is. Definition. Uh, in, in the entrances, you can get a definition as a question and you might have to put the options as the answers. When in the subjective, it will go opposite. Okay, keep that in mind. Very important.